So I'd like to talk about having an opium circuit. With, in this case, just being with resistive elements, but it could also have been with a whole bunch of uh, dependent sources. But what happens when the circuit gets a bit more complex than some of the very straightforward routine structures? So imagine I have a circuit like I'd have underneath here. as kind of an example. And you look at the circuit and you think, well, you know, I could actually, I see a nice resistive feedback, but I have this whole network here. Now I know I can take that entire network and eventually make a one port network out of it. And so I want to try to think about what are those concepts and implications because very clearly I could take this whole part and make a one port network, say a Norton equivalent. Now if I do a Norton equivalent, that would be great. And a lot I could do with this directly. In fact, directly I could imagine if I took this network and I made an RA and an input current source as a result of it, I could get two relationships both for RA and IN. You think, okay, great, so we're in good shape. But something to notice here that actually allows you to go even one step further in the simplification. And there's many, many ways to see this kind of a circuit solution, but this is one of them to notice. That if I had an amplifier with feedback such as it's stable, and I notice I have an input current here, have the plus terminal to ground, notice that if I have a resistance to ground, what's the net effect of current that's coming down in this line? Well, basically zero, because this voltage is at ground, and that voltage is at ground. So the effect of the resistance is zero, so I might as well just ignore it in this situation. Again, this assumes an ideal op amp, so the gain is infinite. But it's not infinite, I might have to think about how much this would affect me, but in general, this is a fairly good approximation in many cases, such that basically is as if that resistor doesn't exist. What is the effect? Well, imagine if I have such a Norton equivalent circuit, the current source and the resistor, Knowing this node is roughly a ground means, again, this resistance isn't there, and I basically just have the Norton equivalent current source going into the amplifier with a resistive feedback and the resistor in the feedback loop. In this case, what this would mean is that basically the current goes through that resistance and out. This is, by the way, known as a trans, trans, uh, trans impedance amplifier. So basically, I have a, basically an impedance that goes from the current to the output voltage. Um, but of course, the input and the output voltage are in different places, so there's a trans component. It's in a different place. So in this particular circuit, given I know that the input current equivalent version of it is, that's all I would need to know and then have it go through the feedback resistance. Put all that into this structure and I get left with this equation. And you think, this is great. Well, I can take the equivalent resistors because numbers are sometimes a good thing and people feel comfortable with that. I've got two resistors here, R3, so the sum of these turns out to give me RA is a 10K, and then over that I get an, I, an input current and resulting output. And the output current basically becomes negative at the input. You may or may not have guessed that from this initial structure, but once you kind of put these pieces together, it becomes pretty straightforward to kind of see this solution.